A call to worship is sounded in Kassala, the capital of the eastern state of Sudan. Worshippers are gathered for the Friday prayers and wait to receive a message. This day, the message addresses compassion in the faith, but the messenger has added a little twist to the story. Imam Tariq Mohammed is talking about HIV and AIDS for the first time in this mosque. With regard to the use of condoms, we support the opinions of doctors and those who have expertise in the field. And if they say they should be used, then we endorse their views and do not contest it. However, in both religions, we encourage people to abstain, as the use of condoms can be misinterpreted to encourage promiscuity. AIDS and sexuality remain a major taboo in the predominantly Islamic northern Sudan. According to the 2008 UN AIDS report, Sudan has the highest HIV infection rate in the Middle East and North Africa, with up to 420,000 people living with the disease. And as figures rise, Sudan struggles with a lack of awareness. The opinion of religious leaders matters, especially when it comes to sensitive issues uh, such as AIDS and sexuality. That's why UNDP and Sudan National AIDS Program uh, mobilized and trained 175 imams and priests to teach people how to prevent uh, HIV, how to treat AIDS, how to end stigma, and most importantly, how to remind everyone that AIDS is not a punishment from God, but rather a disease that people can live with. Asha Masood is HIV positive and has been with the disease for over four years. She got infected by her husband, who was expelled from the United Arab Emirates six years ago when they found out he had AIDS. He died in 2004, and five months later, Asha's little daughter died too. One of her other children is also infected. The people in the village said that no one should deal with me and that I should immediately be carried outside the village and the car that takes me should be burnt down. They said I should have nothing to do with our tribe. I was isolated and I became like a poor woman. I even thought of buying hair dye and swallowing it in order to kill myself. Al-Sabi Ali Taha has been very vocal about his status. He is also HIV positive and has been trying to live a normal life. But speaking out often got him into trouble. People have told me to my face that I'm a fraud, that I do it for the money. They say I have had AIDS for the last 10 years, yet I'm still healthy. We really hope that people get more information about the disease in order to end the stereotype image associated with it of an individual who is frail and whose health condition is deteriorating. Kassala state borders Ethiopia and Eritrea and is believed to be one of the most vulnerable to HIV infection amongst the northern states. With an estimated 2.5 million people, the state has only three voluntary testing centers, two of which are based in the city. Now they need to reach out to the countryside. It is not possible to give an exact percentage of the prevalence of the disease, but we admit that HIV rates are high here because Kassala shares two borders. Out of 100 patients we test for HIV AIDS, we found that 30 are HIV positive cases. Sudan's National AIDS Program has seen the need to create awareness of the disease. In 2005, they formed an association of people living with AIDS to provide support to HIV-positive people and their families. 120 active members in Kassala pray every night that they will see a healthy and stigma-free tomorrow.